What is the actual optionality that women have in the sexual market? There's a lot of misunderstanding about this, that it's some massive top-down dominance hierarchy that you can't possibly clamber to the top of. Well, in today's video, part two on the sexual wealth gap, I'm gonna be blowing apart those myths and showing you that there are relatively simple ways for you to infiltrate sideways laterally into different sexual markets to make sure that you can get quality women. So check out the video. see that yes in recent even in the I would say in the last decade really it's like last 10 to 15 years there's been or in the last generational shift there has been this big shift which is not so much to do with the me too movement or feminism or instagram it's mostly to do with the fact that we spend 6 hours a day on our screens and that our social interactions are uh, often only or mostly digital and that people are just atomized and in, in their rooms. And this is particularly prevalent for men because, you know, women tend to be more social. They're still, still, still spending an inordinate amount of time of, of that social time doing it digitally, but they tend to be more social. Whereas men, you know, may not be inherently. So for particularly young men, it can be the default and the easier and the kind of more natural thing to do to go into isolation or contact with people only through, you know, online video games or chats or Reddit posts or, you know, texting people or whatever at the best. You know, the things in the modern era which mean that we can, gives us the illusion that we can exist without other people. Right, and it's, I'm not, you know, certainly not the only person to be noticing this. This is being noticed at broad scale sociologically and what, the way that, you know, mental health is, is diminishing. The, the number of close friends, particularly that men have, is diminishing. You know, the, these things are all being, yes, being uh, exasperated or being created by the world that we currently live in. But it is not uh, an inescapable prison. Right? It is not a cage. It's that we, as individual men, need to make consistent choices that, yes, possibly go against the flow of what most other people are doing or people within your social circle are doing, guys that you know, for example, but knowing that there are ways out and they, they are not going to happen for you. At other times in history, maybe it did happen for you because, you know, you, you, you went to the village dance and there was a small sexual market and perhaps the parents were at play as well, helping people get together and, uh, you know, kind of those, that mating and dating might have been kind of more structured within a, any given society. We're never going back to that. So there's no point in holding on to some, you know, golden era uh, idea that whatever, we should go back to some particular point in Western history where things worked for the average male. Uh, it's not going to happen. And it's not, it's not the... It's not even, I don't think it's planned. It's not, it's not some grand conspiracy. It's, these are symptoms of all sorts of other things that are happening with the atomization of society, with the digital worlds that we're inhabiting, with the easy access to junk food versions of human experiences, right? So, I mean, whether that's shitty food, uh, whether that's pornography, whether that's the constant access to kind of low-grade stimulating uh, entertainment, you know, like we can, we can indefinitely distract ourselves. But underneath that, most, I think most people know that that is soulless ultimately, not nourishing, and that there is uh, inherent human yearnings which won't go away. Right? It's, you, can't, you can't ideologically convince yourself that if you're a straight male that is attracted to women that you don't need a woman in your life and you're better off without one because it's too dangerous and women don't give you anything or whatever. How do you know? Like, because someone told you that? Uh, you need to find that out for yourself. And if you had a bad experience, I'm not discounting the bad experience and I'm not saying that it was your fault or that the other person was not at fault. Yeah, they can be shit people, shit men, shit women. People can treat each other extraordinarily badly. When we get close, when we are intimate, when we trust, when we love, then the, the stakes raise, the risks raise, right? Yeah. like. Someone on the streets tells me they hate me, I would just be a bit like, okay, dude, but if, you know, a close family member said that to me, then that would mean something, right? Because they, the closest people are to you, yes, the more potential they have to hurt you. But that is, you know, that is 
inevitable anyway. Like the alternative, as I've said before, is to hide in your own bubble of essentially distractions and numbing behaviours, uh, just kind of running out the clock on, on your life in some kind of way, or it's to dive into it and, and get to experience the truth of what it is to be a functional human and the truth in, and the bitterness and the pain and the beauty and the exquisiteness of it, the love story, the love lost, the, uh, you know, the, the hero's journey, the masculine journey, the, the discoveries. These are things that don't just happen, right? The, the hero's journey is not something that is given to everybody and, and, you, and you're given a roadmap and given mentors along the way and you set out on it. It is something that you actually have to choose, choose to engage with it because otherwise it is just the stayed at home, didn't try story and that one can run out. And I've, you know, as I mentioned before, I, I see this with certain men coming to me I don't like to say too late, but certainly late, right? Because, you know, like I had a chat with that guy and I'm like, okay, what is it you can do? Like you, you have to make this decision ultimately that are you going to start asking women out? He, he said, oh, you know, I went on a couple of dates, but then I, when I was on the date, I was like, when were these couple of dates? Years ago. So, you know, date randomly here or there. Uh, he thought, oh, this isn't fun and I, w and I wish I wasn't on the date, right? Because, okay, yes, it's uncomfortable <laughs> To, to sit opposite someone when you're not exactly sure how to do it and you could feel like, oh, this would be easier and safer and better if I just run back home and whatever my, what, choose my flavor of distraction poison uh, to put myself back into my comfort. Yeah, it's kind of uncomfortable. I, and again, I'm grateful to those women in the early days where I had uncomfortable dates, where I was awkward, where I choked, where I didn't know what to say, where she got up and walked out, where I got up and walked out, uh, where they ghosted me, like all of that, I'm grateful for it because in a not particularly long period of time, it was a couple of years of really focusing in on this, it was not the only thing, I did some other stuff as well, but you know, make, making it a priority, which was clear to me, it's a priority until it's second nature that if I'm out of work, I can get a job, right? That's the point of game, the point of seduction, is not actually uh, to lay a hundred women or to constantly chase uh, status symbols of of objects of you know feminine desire. It's that if I am single, I'm out of the market. That I have the skills to engage with the markets, right? And I don't have to fight against the top of the tree because really we're looking at what is this particular woman? What are her options? Now, she, it may appear that she has infinite options because if she's attractive and she front face, faces as that, let's say on social media, she may have a lot of followers, a lot of men who are you know, replying to her thirst trapped in some kind of way. But we also need to be aware that like not all women, right? Like, it's like if you're looking at Instagram and that bloody you know, for you page or whatever, I swear I have never looked up big booby girls in uh, bikinis on Instagram. I swear it. And yet there they all are. Right. And it's, and it, anytime I open, I'm like, no, just show me stuff about olive trees or cat videos or something. But you know, the algorithm knows men breasts, send it to them and they'll respond. It can be easy to think that, okay, all women are, are like that to less or greater or lesser degree where they're, where they're using their beauty and they're front facing on, on a digital platform in order to get attention or likes or followers or whatever from men. Yeah, of course. There are some women to whom that is their job, right? It's a, it's a profession these days, okay? It's an in, being a sexual influencer or a thirst trap lady or whatever. Yeah, okay. There's plenty of... There is some, some percentage of women who do that. But it's not all beautiful women. Like, not all appealing, attractive women are doing that. Uh, many of them, like, just have a closed Instagram with their friends. Or they're not on social media. That, that, that exists too. Or they're in, into it and they get addicted to it for a while like everyone can, and especially if you're getting lots of attention from it. And they have very quickly start to see and experience how cheap that validation is. That it's for some, okay, yeah, for some people, just like with, with men, we can get cheap validation or cheap dopamine hits and we may settle with that and that may be, you know, what we feed on. But underlying that is the same yearnings, the human yearnings that she has uh, as a man has. 
And so, you know, even if she has a bunch of followers or whatever, how many real options does she have? She probably has more than you. Yes, it's true, right? Like, you know, you put a comparably att attractive woman next to me who's social and whatever. Uh, if she goes on a dating app, yes, she can go on a date tonight. Uh, yes, there will be, you know, men trying to get her attention. Like the, of course, it's, it's not even or necessarily fair and so fucking what? It's like, okay, we're working with, we're with the different markets that are at play. But, you know, her options, yeah, there's, she has options for a bit of dick, for, for a man of, of any sort to come into her life, but there is um, massive amounts of women who are extremely unsatisfied with the men that they have options with, or they've, they've, they've tried the apps and they've been disappointed. They've been flaked on as much as the guys will, you know, they also get flaked on. They go on disappointing dates where they're, where it's awkward and, uh, they end up hooking up with some guy and the sex is shit, um, or it's good. And then he never contacts her again. And she's back out into it, working on this, you know, working on this conundrum herself. So, you know, in reality, she may only have a handful of like legitimate options. Right, and, and if that's the case, then in some cases she has very, very f way less than you would think. There will be times in a woman's life when she doesn't do clubbing anymore or she never did. Uh, she's decided that you know, she doesn't want to have trashy hookups. She's dated a, a certain type of guy, maybe, the, you know, maybe the, the player type, enough times that she's recognised that, okay, for all the sparkly kind of sensations that she might get from that, that, okay, ultimately that's not fulfilling. Uh, you know, she maybe have moved to a, a new place and she's shy, you know, she's just a bit more of an introvert or she's not someone who feels comfortable going out and socialising all the time or she just tends to like to hang around with uh, people that she feels closer to in smaller groups. All right, like I have been many times surprised when I've met a woman that was definitely very attractive and no, she's like, she's not on Instagram. I mean, that's, that's fairly rare, but I've, I've met a bunch where she just doesn't go out and party anymore. Cause especially if she partied, you know, went out 18 to 20 and did the club thing, that gets old very quickly for, for most, most people. And uh, certainly for women, because there's only so much kind of cheap validation you can get from guys trying to grope you on the dance floor or buy you drinks or the lights or whatever. Some people never grow out of that, most do. And, uh, you know, and then after college and people start pairing off and she may find that her social circle has diminished as well. And so the viable options that she have will be often way less than you may think. Now, even if she does have, you know, broader scope uh, options than you, what's important to understand is how can we jump to the front of her queue, not the queue. Right? We're not, again, we're not trying to fight against every eligible bachelor on the planet. We're just... Where, where are things going on for her? She may have a guy that like is hotter or, or something other than you, but who's chatting to her, but he's not pulling the fucking trigger. He's not asking her out. He's, or he's, you know, got a couple of girls on the go maybe, and he's being flaky on that girl. And then you come in as a stranger who's, you know, just moved sideways from your, from wherever your sexual market is into her individual sexual market. And you've arrived as a new product and you've got things moving. One of the things that is most attractive in a man is his action, right? Like, yeah, will a, will a woman given, if it's only, if her only choice is a photo of a guy, well then of course she's gonna, you know, choose the photo that's the more appealing, attractive, muscular or whatever type of, you know, look that she likes, uh, man, yeah, okay. And if we wanna play that game, we'll, most men will kind of lose on average. We've been through this before. We know that it's a 10 to one ratio of uh, men to women. We know that the algorithms are trying to make money out of you, not trying to deliver you true love. But most importantly is we need to understand that if we, yeah, if we're looking at it only on those stats of like, okay, what happens in the out, on, on, the, on the apps, then yeah, the only metrics we're looking at is basically age and, and looks. But when it comes to the real world, real life, which still exists, perhaps not for much longer, but it still does exist, the, the decision-making process for a woman is a moment-by-moment, -moment resonance, felt-based thing, right? She's really responding, yes, I mean, okay, she's going to observe the way that you look, your style, your grooming, uh, okay, so that, you know, some of these things that you can affect a little or not, but 
she makes the decision on from an emotional perspective. Does she feel good with this guy? Is it relaxed? Is it easy? Is it fun? Is it a bit flirty? Uh, is it unexpected? Is it comfortable? Right? Like there's there's all these emotional grades that we can't tell from a photo or a profile, and they're they're things that. Maybe, sure, certainly can be influenced by the way he looks, but they're inherent to him as a man. What makes a man sexy is him in action, ultimately. And there's ways that, you know, we kind of put on the costume of, that hints at that, right? Like if I dress like uh, a lumberjack, right, that might be a sexy avatar for a certain type of woman, not because of the checks or the colours of the black and the red, it's because it ties into a man who can chop wood or a man of action, right? Like a man who, who has like the sexy ability in that particular field. So the, the directness of going up and speaking to a woman, of actually asking her out and showing that you mean it can be the thing that makes the difference, right? A, a woman can understandably view you as just a dude when you speak to her in some situation. And then that can shift on a dime from the moment where he says, listen, you're really sexy and fun, I wanna take you out, all right? Where he means it and he's projected his intention and he's shown action. He's shown that, yeah, I'm gonna take this leadership moment and I'm gonna take the subsequent ones and all the ones that need to be taken along the way. And at the same time, it's kind of chill and the conversation doesn't need to be rocket science, doesn't need to be necessarily scintillating and, uh, you know, the most complex or verbose, it just needs to work. We need to have a vibe together. And then there needs to be movement and escalation. Any man can do that. Maybe not on day one, but he's going to have to start to build the reference experiences, the skill set, and he's going to have to go through repetition of meeting and yes, being rejected, absolutely. Right, like when asked why most, you know, this half, at least half of men never approach. And I'm going to bet that the other half did it five times. Right? It's like, it's very rare for, for any man to proactively and consistently when he's, you know, sexually unemployed to go out there and start knocking on doors uh, and try and get a, a sex job. Is this analogy still working? You know what I mean? So if we start to take those actions, well, we could look at it even a little cynically and go, well, a lot of the competition is out of the race. Now, I wish, I wish for all men and women to you know, get the joy and the connection and the love and the relationships and the sex that they wish. That would be fucking way better. And it's quite unnecessary that it doesn't happen. There is right now across the globe, millions of single people who would want to be with each other, one, some combination, and would want to be good to each other and please each other and look after each other and, uh, you know, share that time from 22 to 27 or 32 to 38 or that summer or that while where we were lovers and became friends or that intense relationship which formed us in some kind of way and, and made us grow and experience and then maybe ultimately it ended with uh, something really painful which was part of the learning experience of life and so on and so on. It sucks that that that's not happening when it could, because unlike the market, you know, where there are finite resources, where there is, uh, you know, certain amounts of monies and, and, and uh, properties and, and things that are distributed across the planet and, you know, can we, they're, they're finite, right? As long as there's more or less equal numbers of men and women out there and we're not in situations where there's men hoarding 100 women in harems, and, you know, there are, there are modern versions of that where a man may hoard a few women for a period of time or may hoard their casual sexual um, attention for a certain period of time. But that doesn't mean those women are out of the market forever. Right? These, they're not emperors with uh, walled harems. It's just people making decisions to be together and then shift and change. So I want this, you know, video, I'll wrap it up soon, to be basically... A message of both hope and of warning, right? That ultimately you will get nothing from believing that it is pointless. Like you won't get 
even any sense of community, any, even if you know, you're chatting to men about this online, they're not, these people are not really your friends. They're people who are commiserating or, or holding um, an extreme ideological viewpoint and often to sell something or because that they truly believe it or because in their personal experience they had you know, enough bad experiences that they've now decided that all men are this or that dating is pointless or whatever. You want to get nothing out of uh, going to bat or going to war in gender war discussions, which lead to the conclusion of, and therefore I'll boycott women, or to be like really suspicious and um, uh, adversarial to all women, because that will just create a neurosis. That will create more and more distance between you and them. And then you'll find ways to justify that and then you'll disappear into whatever you know small world that you have left around you and it fucking sucks in the long term in the shorter term it may seem to be more painful to go out and face rejection right which is what the 45 percent of men who never do it say the reason why is 70 percent of the reason why is because of the fear of rejection i get it i understand i have been rejected probably at least a thousand times, if not multiple thousand times more than you or almost any other man will ever talk to a woman. Does that make sense? Because I have talked to the many, thousands, right? I've been doing this on and off. And it's, again, when I, it's a utility, it's a skill set. I use it when I need it, which is when I'm single or when I'm feeling greedy uh, and I want another one or, you know, when I'm teaching or when I feel like I want to get into a city, I want to socialize, I want to not be a stranger, you know, I want to go and charm somebody, I want to uh, make friends, right? These are all seduction abilities. It's not just about getting sex from a woman. Uh, it's all those other things. And I know that it has been absolutely worth doing it and going through more rejections than you will ever have to because uh, I wanted to be, you know, the best. I wanted to get the top tier women and I made it into a profession. And at some points, an obsession, probably an unhealthy one at certain points. Again, I'm not here to push the pick up chicks till you die um, <laughs> kind of ethos. It's like, no, learn to pick up to be good with women in general so you can get an awesome woman, an awesome woman. And if you're in a period in your life where it makes sense to ethically date multiple women, then you could do that. If you want to have one person that's in some kind of casual thing because that works for where you're at with your studies and your work and your travel at this point, you could do that. If you want to transition that into finding someone to commit to in some form or another for some period of time, then you can do that. And all of the positives and the real, the real human nourishment that comes along with it, with that, which is, I think, anyway, I could be wrong, not really accessible anywhere else. Yeah, we can get a lot from community, from friends, from a puppy, uh, from spending time in nature, from introspection, from meditation, uh, you know, from dealing with people in all sorts of other ways, but nothing beats it, right? And if you haven't experienced it, maybe you have to take that on faith, but it is absolutely so worth it, right? Because I look back over the multiple different relationships I've had in my life and I think fondly back, some of them ended awfully. Right? Some of them ended with bad things happening. I won't go into it, but you know, anything you can imagine has happened. I don't regret those though. Uh, maybe I regret certain things I did or regret that she did certain things or you know, the, the way it was handled. And yeah, there's things I can learn from relationships and do an autopsy on it and try not to make those mistakes or maybe be caref more judicious about choosing a partner for a particular type of relationship and so on. But I'm glad I spent, you know, 22 to 24 with that girlfriend, I won't say her name, uh, because we had that experience, that love, the, that journey, the, those confusions, those fights, those makeups, uh, you know, and all, all the stuff that went along with that until it was time for that to change and for me to be single again and to be like, okay, what's my choice here? Be in the market or be out of the market. And remember, there's not one market. It's like every woman lives within her own little sexual market. And maybe there's only, maybe there's no one else competing right now or, or she's already friend zoned the three guys that she thought that, you know, that might have been prospects and you come in as fresh blood, not doing the nice guy, friendy, hanging around, pretending not interested thing and you bowl up to her and you hit her with a wave of gentlemanly direct masculinity 
that she goes, whoa, I haven't experienced that in a while or maybe not ever because no one fucking does it anymore, <laughs> right? Because men don't approach women well. Okay, yeah, women will get wolf whistled or they'll have guys try and, you know, ask for directions or at clubs they might roll over drunkenly and try and say something or in their social circle or at work or studies, guys, you know, might try and get near them in some kind of way. Like, yes, men will try all sorts of ineffective strategies because we're horny and we want women. Uh, so, yeah, there'll be male attention of some sort, um, but a lot of that's white noise. A lot of that is not appealing to her because of the way it's delivered because it's the time's already passed for that with that guy or whatever. And you can hack the system by not trying to battle it out within one tiny social circle, not trying to battle it out uh, on digitally online, whether that's through, you know, clout-based game on Instagram or whether it's grinding the fucking apps, which we've all talked about many times. We know that they're hell and stacked against everyone, I mean, Almost all men, except for like a tiny percentage of, you know, visually particularly appealing men or whatever. But once again, reality is still out there. Until everyone plugs into neuro fucking AI net or whatever. In, I mean, I, and that's going to happen soonish. And then a normal, this, this like me filming and saying words was going to be so redundant, huh? Like AI will write the script for me. You'll be able to put an avatar up of me. I'm like, right now, it's still just me, James Marshall, with no script, talking to a camera. I promise it's real. <laughs> I'm a real thing. Okay, who knows where that's all going to end up. But I suspect, uh, you know, my, my industry is not going to die. I suspect that uh, men are still going to be interested in women. Women still interested in men. And they're going to want to get together. And, and even if there'll be a big... Uh, momentary change where suddenly if we plug the thing in, everyone looks sexy and whatever, that people will play with those games. But then there will be backlashes against that as well, where a, an individual woman and thousands and millions of them will be like, I want a real man, a real man in, in the sense that he's really in front of me and a real man who exhibits the, the metrics in the sexual markets that ultimately make the difference. Okay, so we know that the ones that are talked about is looks. Can we adjust that? Yeah, to some degree. Fitting under looks, what I would say is, you know, very briefly, it's grooming and style and visual presentation in terms of gesture, movement, vocal tonality, eye contact. Those are the things that will make a man attractive, right? Yes, there will, okay, there's a particular, you know, that particular face and build and whatever that if you give a woman a bunch of photos, she'll be like, that's the hot dude, that's the not hot dude. Okay, let's not be naive. But Women date a man if they think he's sexy, right? If they find him attractive. It's not an arbitrary, absolute scale of attractiveness. So if the man, you know, presents well, he, he dresses in, has a style that works. He's groomed, his hygiene's good. His nails are cut and he's not dirty. Uh, he speaks with a lower vocal tonality, he's able to make good commu communication and eye contact. He gestures in a way that's not erratic and nervous. You know, he holds himself well. Like all that stuff ties together to make the man sexy. All right? There are pl plenty of men that I have taught and plenty of collaborators that I've hung out with, guys that became exceptional with women uh, who are very clearly average in looks, right? Very clearly of average height, of average like symmetry, of average, you know, like a bit fat, a bit skinny, you know, all those, all those kinds of things. Um, but to individual and ultimately many different individual women, to them, that man was really fucking sexy. All right, so that's stuff that you can work on. And again, the thing that will make, one of the things that makes, if not, yeah, I mean, one of the most important things that makes a man sexy is seeing him, him, him in action. And in action for most women in this context is going to be the way that he goes and actually tries to start something with her, with directness, with boldness, with calibration, with emotional sensitivity and empathy, you know, with, with uh, some understanding of what the female situation might be like so that it's not just a subject object thing where I'm trying to like press buttons to unlock this kind of robotic thing to get sex or something that I'm actually seeing her as a, as a real human being and getting to know her you know, in, in her emotional strokes and, and the way that she is as an individual person. Those things will matter much more than the benchmark of, of you know, looks, right? The other thing that I'll wrap up with, but I've mentioned this before, 
that makes a massive difference in terms of your value as a man is absolutely your sexual ability. Now, this can be a bit of a catch-22 in the sense that if you don't have any or little sexual experience with a woman, then how do I get sexual experience so that a woman finds me attractive because of my sexual experience? Okay, yes, there, there, is, there is a, can be problems there, but there is definitely things that you can do in advance to, to research that and to study that. Coming up very soon, I'm going to be launching my new product, which is the Master Lover Toolkit, which is a stripped down and much more budget friendly version of the Master Lover Method, which was my most popular ever online digital product, which I launched early this year. And this is the step-by-step -step stripped sleek how-to guide to be exceptional in the bedroom. So it takes a guy through every stage from literally the beginning, you know, from how to lead a woman into the seduction location, to undress her, to kiss her, different qualities and types of touch for arousal and for taking leadership of her, moving into dominance through dirty talk, voice commands, rewards, and then a vast toolkit of technical proficiencies that all women love. And very importantly, how to make these uh, nuanced and particular to the specific woman, right? Because there are, you can learn, you can research all sorts of sexual te techniques online. If you want to look up squirting, for example, there will be a video and it'll show you the technicalities that will probably work with, with squirting. Often it doesn't work for a lot of couples because there's a lot of uh, relaxation and arousal buildup and command over the woman's body that you need to go through in order to get to the point where she's engorged and ready to squirt, right? So as an example. So in this course, I'm showing all of the, the technical skills, yes, broken down into explicit step-by-step -step instructions. And then at the same time, I'm showing how do I communicate with my partner in real time? How do I learn about her body? How do I get her out of her head into her sensuality? Uh, and how do I create a unique dynamic between her and I? Because the best lovers are not men who have 10 tricks that they do the same on every woman. They're men who, yes, understand, you know, her anatomy and understand positioning and understand different technical aspects from choking to spanking to hair pulling to dirty talk to maneuvering around to sensual touch to different types of breathing to angles. Like so many, you know, particular pieces of the, of the toolkit. But it's the man that is adaptable and is actually able to, without ego, but with clarity, communicate and navigate with the partner that becomes the best that she's ever had. And as someone that, without any arrogance, can clearly say I have been the best that men, most of the women that I've been with have had because I gave a shit, because I learned, because I've practiced, because I've studied, because I've asked lots of questions, because I was willing to drop my ego and really wanted to learn and become the best. It's, it's actually not that hard to become the best any woman has ever had unless she, I don't know, she, she happened to be with some absolute stud superstar because most men don't care to or they're embarrassed to uh, find out what they don't know. And that's understandable. You know, where do you learn about sex? Mostly from porn or from kind of, you know, dirty locker room talk or bragging or uh, little tidbits from here or there on the internet. And so it's hard for a man to learn, especially a man that doesn't have a lot of experience. So that's why I put together the Master Lover Toolkit uh, to make this journey easy to go through and to create a reference guide that you can return to throughout your sexual life as you understand the nuances and layers to it. So the launch for the Master Lover Toolkit is coming up very soon, but right now I'm offering a free masterclass on sex positions. So all you need to do to get this video is click the link in the description, put your name, email in, and you'll get that video immediately. And this uh, shows you the most important positions, and there's not that many of them. You don't need to learn the Kama Sutra with 48 positions. Uh, there's only a handful of positions, but what makes, turns them from like uh, robotic, awkward, very average versions of them to something that is <clears throat> high art, that is extremely stimulating um, and understands all the variations, the transitions and the nuances that can happen with these particular sexual positions, this video shows it all. So check that out. You can receive that for free right now. So to recap, the important things to take away from today's video is, yes, sexual markets exist, 
you're not just fighting in a singular market, that these countless numbers of markets intersect and that there is the ability for mobility within them. And the factors that are gonna make the most difference, the ones that are inside your control, especially, are your proactivity. It's becoming sexy by doing. The vast majority, unfortunately, of men are not doing the doing, right? If we're trying to compete in the digital space, then that is going to be demoralizing. But if we are gonna compete against whatever this individual woman's other options are, then that's a much more doable thing. Learning, the art, the science, the discipline uh, of cold approach, that is just meeting strangers. And that doesn't always mean running up and down the most busy streets uh, in a metropolitan area and approaching 10 girls a day. It means sometimes talking to women consistently. In, and there's, there are, for most people, there are infinite numbers of possibilities where you could do that. And to know that the things that I can affect is yes, my grooming and my looks and sure, go to the gym and put on some weight or lose some weight. You know, those things, okay, they, they will add some degree of passive value to you. But really women don't make those decisions mostly based on that. They're actually not always trying to upgrade to the next hotter or slightly richer guy. That's just not the fact of it. Yes, you can find plenty of examples of someone, a woman jumping ship to a guy that's richer or something, but you can find many, many more examples of a woman who is emotionally connected to a man will be often extremely loyal to him. If she loves him, respects him, finds him sexy, and she feels good with him because he has developed the abilities to be chill, to communicate emotionally, to touch and fuck well, to lead her, to share with her. Like, you know, they may, may, may kind of sound like Disney stuff except for the fucking bit, um, but this is, Again, what humans really, really want. Yeah, people can get distracted by all the shiny things and the glitz and the glamour and the validation and, and some women and some men will be totally lost in that for weeks, months, years and possibly a lifetime. But many will not. Many are looking for nourishment and in uh, of a deeper type. And as that becomes scarcer, it becomes more valuable actually. So don't discount what the, the, the humanity that you have to offer a woman how much pleasure you could actually give her by holding her and uh, cuddling with her and pl pleasing her sexually and just spending chill time with her or cooking a meal together, going for a walk. Like these, these are simple human experiences that ultimately this is what couples want to do together, right? Forget about the, you know, the top tier club chick who's jetting around the world and, and uh, you know, is an Instagram model or whatever. Yeah, there, there's, there are ways to get into that and that's a whole other thing. But it's not necessary and, and ultimately I don't think will be nourishing for most men and of, often it's just not possible. You're just not going to compete in that particular type of international market. You don't need to. You need to be able to have skills enough, confidence enough, and confidence is developed by doing. It's not, you don't do it in advance. You don't, you know, practice and study and get your confidence and then you go out, you go out, you get on dates, and you will feel unconfident in the moment and then you'll just go, ah, oh, so anyway, um, what's the plan for summer? And then you'll be confident with that question and she'll start putting something back and then there'll be uh, a moment where suddenly the conversation has its own energy and she's invested in this as well. And then I just need to lead it and then I'm like, I'm confident with this or I haven't been here before and so I need to go through it unconfidently um, so that next time I, I have mapped that territory more or less previously so I know where to go next time. Right, we can't. You can't avoid this. You, there's no way to, you know, have it just installed into you. There's not really any way to uh, work around it, and there shouldn't be either. Because as I mentioned earlier in the video, there are so many correlating benefits that you get by being social, by being seductive, by taking risks, by going and meeting rejection. Because it will, it will inevitably happen. This is going to be a process where you step into the open markets. And then various people, and if and quite often the majority of them will reject you. That's okay as long as eventually someone says yes, which they will. It's not, it's not uh, impossible. It's not a moonshot goal. Single women also want to date. You just need to find one, and you need to practice your communication skills, and you need to get competent enough that she can go. She can see the sexiness that is inherent in you, which it is. 
There is something sexy about you. There is a masculine core in you. It'll be developed in your own unique way. It'll be expressed in, in, in a very specific way that's to you. You don't need to emulate or uh, clone yourself to any avatar of what is perceived to be sexy man. There, are so much vari there is so much variation on it. But ultimately it comes down to the ability to lead, to connect, to sexually please, uh, and to be like the raw authentic self that you are as a man who is on his journey, which I said before is optional actually to be on a hero's journey or not. It doesn't, it just doesn't just happen. You have to choose it and you have to re-choose it over and over again, right? And yeah, that's the burden of being a man, but it's also the, the gift of being a man is that I get to choose autonomy over and over again and I can fall over and I can fall off the wagon and into the ditch and I can have moments of despair and moments where it feels like it's not going to work and I can be totally out of the market, completely not involved at all, and then I can go, fuck it, and I can pick myself up and I can step back out and go, I'm back on the market, ladies. And, uh, and I think that's you know, a beautiful thing to carry with you is that you do have the choice, right? And you are making a choice one way or another. You know, not making the choice passively is a choice and at least you know where that's going to go. We, we all know the short-term outcome of that and the short-term comfort we might have of escaping. But trust me, I've seen it in the eyes of men in their 50s, 60s who missed it. And it's brutal to watch, right? Because there is all those years and all that time which has passed, right? Which you cannot get back. It's way better to have spent, especially your early years, not the only thing, okay? You got other stuff to do. There are times where you have to put your head down and focus on work or study or whatever, but don't miss your 20s socially or sexually. It's hard to get that back. It can be, you know, there, okay, it's never too late, but it is, it can be late. It can be very late and eventually it will be too late. So there's your warning and your inspiration. Carrot on the stick. I hope that's been helpful. This is James Marshall signing out and uh, stay tuned for the launch of the Master Lover Toolkit coming out very soon and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.